So this is a requested video about lesson planning. One of my subscribers actually asked me to make this video a while back, but since I'm getting ready to write up my lesson plans anyway, I decided to go ahead and to make this video. Now, one of the main things that you do not want to do when you are lesson planning is do not complete or write out your lessons. Do not do your lesson planning on the weekends. Now, in the past, I used to do my lesson plans on a Saturday and literally, y'all, I would be crying, looking out the window while I was feverishly typing away, inputting the data or inputting the information to complete my lesson planning. And I mean, life was literally passing me by and I felt like I was just stressed and just, you know, unhappy because I was doing that work at home. And it would take me maybe like an hour or two, typically around two hours really to complete my lesson planning. And I I just really made a commitment to myself or a promise to myself that I would not do my lesson planning on the weekend anymore because I needed that time to just rest and to relax and to kind of like let go and not think about school. So first things first, do not do your lesson planning on the weekend for sure. And if you can, you want to actually complete your lesson planning during your teacher planning time. So teachers are usually given like one hour a day for our teaching teacher planning time. And that's a time where we're able to grade and or make phone calls to parents or just, you know, whatever we need to do without their students in our classroom, whatever type of schoolwork that we need to finish or to work on, whatever type of meetings we need to have, whatever. We do that during our teacher planning time. Now, if you're like me during my teacher planning time, a lot of times I have no quiet time. Either I'm at meetings, whether they be faculty meetings, whether they're department meetings, whether they're meetings for our 504s, IEP, which is like meetings for individualized student plans, whether my phone is ringing or the door is not, someone's knocking at my door, whatever. I'm always typically interrupted during my teacher planning time. So it's hard for me to like, you know, have 30 minutes, 40 minutes of inter in, uh, in uninterrupted time in order to complete my lesson plan. Now, contrary to, I know what some people believe, we do not make up our own lessons, meaning that we don't make up, you know, the, the content that we're going to teach students. We, go, we do not create the pace in which we teach students, at least not in my district or not in my school. So let me know if that is different in your school, but I am in a public school. I know maybe charter schools are a little different and also private schools, but I know in public schools, at least in my state and my district, I do not create that content. I'm not responsible for exactly what I'm going to be teaching my students. That is actually that information is given to me from my district so that's determined or given to me from my district I don't know who else go what else goes into or who else decides that outside of my district if anyone but that's between you know my superintendent as well as our school board members so the information regarding what I teach and when and the pace at which I teach it is already predetermined and it's preset preset now I determine how I'm going to teach and also the resources that I'm going to use. Now, I we, we I receive workbooks, you know, I have math workbooks, I have reading workbooks, uh, writing workbooks, those types of workbooks, but any other type of, you know, extra resources, extra worksheets, um, that actually comes uh, from me and comes out of my pocket if I have to like go on Teacher Pay Teacher, which is like a site that uh, teachers have that they actually create materials that other teachers can buy sometimes it's free but you use the, their teacher created materials and in, in order to uh, help with the lessons or help with you know students to understand content i know i use teacher pay teacher i also use pinterest in order to find like worksheets if i want to enrich meaning add to the curriculum that's already set uh, which i which we do at my school we actually receive the curriculum and we make it more robust we actually add a little bit more content and a little bit more material to teach our our kiddos our kindergartners so i know that i had another subscriber they said you know wow wait a minute all of those sight words that you have on your board some of those sight words i'm using or we're teaching our kids in first grade well at my school in my kindergarten class what we do is we add to the curriculum the curriculum may say or the lesson plans may say teach them these sight words and we actually add maybe three to five more sight words 
to what the lesson plans actually state. So we can modify, really increase the lesson plans in terms of adding to it, but definitely you can't take away from the lesson plans that um, you create. So when I'm getting ready to start my lesson plans, this is what I have um, set. I have already my laptop or my desktop open. I have the lesson plans from the previous week available. If I don't have them in paper, like um, the paper lesson plans, then I have it open on a window on my laptop or my desktop. I actually have our pacing guides, which is comes from our district. And that is information that tells us, okay, this is when you're going to teach this particular material to your students. So this is a material that you're going to teach as well as this is when you're going to teach it. So I have opened my pacing guide as well. And I have opened the current lesson plan, the template of the current lesson plan that I'm getting ready to create. Now in my school, thank goodness, y'all, thank goodness, we, my kindergarten team, we're collaborative in that we do not, I do not create lesson plans for every subject area, okay? So for kindergarten, we have science, we have social studies, we have math, and then we have English language arts. So I only create the lesson plans for math. Then our team lead, she creates the lesson plans for English language arts. And then our my other colleague, she creates the lesson plans for social studies and science. So thank goodness, I had, actually I had, I knew someone who, you know, created had to create all of the lesson plans for all of the subject areas um, every week in kindergarten. She was a kindergarten teacher as well. She had to create all the lesson plans. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's going to be hours and hours worth of work. Just, you know, pulling, using all these resources, using the curriculum, using um, whatever other resources that she needed to use in order to create the lesson plans. And I was like, oh my gosh. And she was crying. She was like, it takes me like, and she said it took her like three to four hours a week to create lesson plans for four different subject areas. I was like, oh my gosh, I actually helped her. I would send her our created and completed lesson plans. You know, I would send them to her so she can kind of get ideas and not necessarily have to, you know, create it from scratch so she can kind of pull some, some information off of the lesson plans that we created. So I hope you all let me know if you are creating lesson plans by yourself um, for your, uh, you know, for the different subject areas that you teach. I know that middle school is a little bit different than elementary school because middle school you're teaching like one subject, whereas in elementary school we're teaching, you know, four to five different subjects. So that's a little bit different. But um, yeah, I was crying for her. I was a curriculum. And in the curriculum are the standards, like, you know, this is good. Right now we're teaching algebraic thinking. You know, it tells me the order in which I'm teaching as well. So I wouldn't teach like geometry before before I teach numbers and operation. They, they set the order of what we're going to teach and then what we're going to teach and then when we're going to teach it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start right now. I typically do my lesson plans after work. Like when, after work, I set up and then I go and I start my lesson plan. So I'm gonna get ready to start that now and I'm hoping that it's gonna take me at the most 30 minutes. I'm shooting for 30 minutes. Only because um, for math right now, we're in a review mode because we're getting ready to start standardized testing. So I don't have to compile, compile or put in as much information into the lesson plan template as I normally would. So I'm hoping it's gonna be 30 minutes at the most, but I have everything already open on my computer and I'm gonna go ahead and start keying everything in and we're gonna see how long it's gonna take for me to complete the lesson plans for two weeks out. Now I also, we all as a team, as a kindergarten team, we decided that we want to have our lesson plans completed two weeks out. So my lesson plans for next week are already completed. They're already completed. They're already printed, ready to go. And now I'm completing my lesson planning for two weeks out. So let's see how long it takes. Let's get started.
as you can see, I'm kind of just copying and pasting. I have opened my lesson plans, my completed lesson plans for last week. And then I just go in and I copy and I'll paste certain things. Like I said, right now we are in review mode for the test. And so right now I do not have to input so, so much information. So it's just me uh, inputting some basic uh, review work into the lesson plan itself. And this is me just on Pinterest right now. I'm looking for some worksheets that the kiddos could use in order to help them review for their addition. So I like this worksheet and thanks to my new printer that I have in my classroom that Vicki gave me. Uh, she's a friend and a subscriber. I can actually put out right here this out and I'm still on Pinterest and I'm just looking at subtraction equations and I'm going to see what it is I like now this one I actually don't mind because this one right here I'm gonna pull it up this one has addition and subtraction together so I think that I'm going to print this one out I think the kids would uh, benefit from this type of a worksheet where they have to really kind of pay attention to the signs to see you know whether or not they're asking for addition or multiplication excuse me addition or subtraction so I actually like this one as well so I think I'm going to print it now actually I'm not going to print this because this is a little small I can already tell that it's not going to fill up the paper and it's a little bit too small so I'm actually going to refrain or not really print this one I'm just going to kind of go back and look for one that is a little bit for that for that when I print it it's going to be to size it's going to be to size so I think this one is going to be it so um, yep I think I'm going to print this one and I'm going to use this one as well yeah that's to scale so yeah also looking for worksheets that the students can use to do homework with so they can practice their learning at home as well. So like I said before, right now I'm just printing out the worksheets that I um, find I think that are going to be most valuable to use in class and at home. So I'm going to be doing that for a little bit of time. So like I said, we'll see how long it takes. So, so far right now I have got one two, three, four, four worksheets that are printed out. I also have some like review, um, work, some review workbook sheets here that I think would be appropriate as well. So I'm gonna kind of like sift through uh, these kind of materials in order for me to, to see if I like some of this material that we have already, students have already completed this work, but I still have some of the workbook sheet and I'm gonna see which ones are appropriate for students to use to prepare them for the test as well. Okay guys, my part of the lesson planning is complete. I'll show you a picture, insert a picture of what it looks like. My colleagues have not yet put in their portion of the lesson plans yet. So it's not ready for me to print them out yet. It'll be ready when they put in their portion, which will be uh, in the next couple of days. So then I'll be able to print it. And then I have a binder, a lesson plan binder that I hold them in. And then I use that binder and those lesson plans are in the binder to 
to you know help me to know what to teach my students on what days to teach them when to teach them and it helps me keep up with the pace and keep up with what my district is saying that i need to be uh, doing in my classroom with the educating my students in the four different subject areas that i teach so all in all it is 4 30 so i kind of got started on this project around i'd say around 3 15 is really when i kind of got started i did get interrupted so that probably we took about five maybe ten minutes off of everything so I would say it took maybe a little bit over an hour for me to complete my lesson plans again honestly this week is a little bit or this week's lesson planning that I just did is a little bit lighter because we are um, in test mode and I'm not really teaching them a whole lot of a chunk of material we're just in review mode so because of that it didn't I didn't have to input as much uh, information in the lesson plans as I normally would have but yeah you know it's always helpful to have right before you the information that you're going to teach your students so you don't have to kind of guess like okay what am I teaching today or or exactly what resources am I going to use it's good to already have that information on paper and have it in a binder and have it sitting before you so all you have to do is just when the kiddos come in have already I already I always keep open my tabs so any videos that I'm going to be using for that day of course all of my worksheets that I'm going to be using for that day I already have everything ready so when the kiddos come in it's just a matter of okay now I'm just going to teach you um, also if you don't if you're not using a whiteboard, you know, I don't know about, you know, middle school or high school, um, but I know in elementary school, those whiteboards are really just essential because um, I use like a lot of times I'll practice with students on the whiteboard, whereas before I would be using worksheets. I don't use those worksheets as much in terms of when we're just doing practice, but now with, just for practice, I'll use the whiteboard and then the next progression is for them to, you know, show their work on a worksheet and then kind of go from there so I just would say if you have not started using whiteboards in your classroom that is something I would say try it out and see how easy it is because the kiddos love writing with that marker and racing and when I say get out the whiteboards they're like yes so yeah that's just I'm gonna throw that in but okay guys I hope that this helps you know leave me your comments leave me your feedback please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one this is Shay with The Learning Project